What's up everybody, Kevin right here from Bitcoin for Beginners. And today I wanna to chat about a topic that we often see in our beginner Facebook group. And that is how do we send coins from place to place? How long does it take? And what else should we expect? Now, before I get any further, if you enjoyed this video or if it's helpful, I would greatly appreciate a like and a subscription. So the overall process is pretty simple. On a high level, first you have to get your destination wallet address. So this is the place you want to receive your coins. And generally you can go to the receive or deposit section of that receiving platform. Sometimes they let you generate new addresses and don't worry about that because new addresses, they're still all tied to your account. So they all add up under your balance. So you copy and paste that destination wallet address and put it into the send and withdraw section of where your coins currently are stored, whether it's a wallet or another exchange, for example. Double and triple check that the address is correct because once again, crypto transactions are irreversible. So if you type something wrong, you lose it forever. Press confirm or send and then wait. After some time and this varies, you can check the destination and your balance should be updated. So once again, I just want to remind you, you must check your addresses because crypto transactions are irreversible. So for example, if you type something wrong, you lose the coins that you're trying to send forever and most of the time there's nobody there to help you. So a good way to circumvent that is to use QR codes if available. But if you can't, then maybe just go through the process end to end with a smaller amount first just to make sure everything works as planned before you send over the bulk of your coins. How long does it take? This is a big question that comes up. So it varies depending on many factors. Like for different coins, Bitcoin has a 10 minutes block confirmation time whereas Ethereum has 15 seconds. And different exchanges or different places require different number of block confirmations before it's considered final. Also, more fees that are offered to the miners means that your transactions are confirmed faster usually. Furthermore, network congestion means a long time before your transaction may be confirmed, sometimes hours or even days for Bitcoin, for example. And I just included a link of a site where you can see the unconfirmed Bitcoin transactions. So if you're wondering if the network is congested, you can go here and it'll give you a live look at how many are waiting to be confirmed. Also, depending on your destination that you're trying to receive your coins at, they may handle your incoming transactions differently. They may require a different number of block confirmations, refresh your system at a different rate, so they may show pending transactions later than other ones. And also they just may be down for maintenance in various times. So basically you just have to wait and be patient depending on the service that you're trying to receive your coins at. Can you check the status of it? Yes, you can. Many times there's a blockchain explorer or viewer. And all you need to do is input the transaction hash or ID. Usually this is provided by the place where you send your coins from. After your transaction is successfully submitted, they'll provide you with a hash or an ID somewhere where you can use to reference your transaction. You can also use your origin or destination address, but if those have a lot of transactions coming in or out of them, you'll need to locate the one that you're looking for. In those blockchain explorers or viewers, you can see details such as the current status, pending, confirmed, failed, number of confirmations, transaction fee you spent, origin, destination addresses, and much more. But please note that not all coins have this available. So like, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and NEO do, but some other ones don't yet have these available if they have their own protocol. So transaction fees is also a big deal when it comes to sending coins. And this may differ depending on network congestion and the place you're sending your coins from. So if you're sending coins within exchanges from one place to the other, like from Coinbase to GDAX and vice versa, they're usually free and instantaneous. But from exchanges to each other, usually you have to pay a network fee and an exchange withdrawal fee. And this all differs based on their business model and the coin involved. You can also send your coin from wallets and oftentimes it lets you set the transaction fee manually. For example, for Ethereum wallets, this is the gas price and gas limit that you would set. As a special case, I just wanna point out that paper wallets is a little bit more difficult to transact from. Basically, you need a software wallet to access the coins from your paper wallets. For Bitcoin-based coins, you need to sweep your balance because of something called change addresses. This could be a whole other video, so I'm not going to dive into that, but please do 
further research to make sure that your process is right if you're going to use paper wallets. So do you have any questions? Please leave me a comment below. If not, happy transferring. Give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.